Hey, so we did this efficiency test a little while back in the Model Y, but it turns out we did get an update to the efficiency of the Model Y where we were supposed to get 10 miles more range uh, based on just a software update. So now the car should be able to go 326 miles on a full charge. So we are going to go back out and do the same test again try to keep it at 60 miles per hour again and see if we can get a better uh, overall efficiency than we did previously uh, where we were trying to get over 316 miles of range efficiency and this time we're going to try to get over 326 miles range efficiency to see how it compares and then we're going to take that and also do a 70 mile per hour and 80 mile per hour test later on so I wanted to get a baseline again with this efficiency so that we can kind of do more apples to apples comparison between the different speeds now that we do have that update of the software. Now it is a little bit colder today, uh, so it is more like 50 degrees, but it will be sunny. So hopefully that will keep it uh, pretty pretty consistent as far as the battery temperature and everything because I am going to try to get the battery nice and warm before we start out that test. And we're just going to do interstate driving again and then turn around and come back. So should be a nice test. And we're trying to get, uh, I think last time we did around uh, 50 miles. So we're going to try to do a very similar amount today. And then that way we can have a nice, uh, again, baseline for future tests. So if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like this. So we're going to get out on the road and get the tires warmed up and the battery warmed up before we get on our efficiency test. And <clears throat> I did air up the tires today, so they should be nice and uh, even at 42 PSI, just like the door placard says. And we also are going to hopefully have a nice warm battery because I did charge the battery before we started out today. So the battery should be pretty good uh, as far as warm, but I'm also gonna navigate to a supercharger to see if we can warm up the battery a little bit more, make sure that it's nice and consistent for that drive. So here we go. So we're navigating to the supercharger and it is preconditioning battery for fast charging. So we should get the battery uh, nice and warm. The PSI is 42 for all the tires. It probably will go up a little bit as it warms up. There's that one already went up to 43 uh, just with a little bit, maybe a mile of driving. So we get on the interstate and it should get the, the tires all warmed up and it should get the battery warmed up. And then we're gonna go from Exit 273 to 306 is, uh, I believe, the same route that I took last time on uh, 75. So we, we go about 32 miles actually in one direction and then 32. So we're going to 32 miles in northbound and then 32 miles southbound to get that efficiency rating. And then we'll do the calculations after the fact and see how close we are. Hopefully we do better in this drive, again, because we do have that update with uh, the efficiency. So we should actually be more efficient this time, at least on paper, than we were last time. And again, it is a little bit colder. Um, right now it says it's 55 degrees. Last time I did this test, I believe it was more like 60, 65 degrees. So it is a little bit cooler. Uh, that could have an impact on it, but I think it should be okay, uh, should be pretty close. So again, with warming the battery up and the tires, we should be in good shape. So here we go. That's where we're going to start our test. We're going to be going 
do it right from the on ramp of 273 so that we can come back to the on ramp of 273 on the way back. Tire pressure is looking good. We're up to like 43, 44 PSI, so it's warmed up there. And we've gone over eight miles, so we'll be able to reset the trip meter here on northbound. All right, here we go. We're gonna reset it right here with that sign. So there it is, northbound. We're starting off 253 wires per mile. And I'm sure it's going to get better than that. So check back in in about 32 miles. test I will add the two numbers up and do a little bit of calculation there to figure out where we're at definitely looks worse than it was last time and hopefully uh, it'll give us a good baseline for future tests all right so it turns out that actually we did much worse than I was expecting uh, so last time we did 198 watt hours per mile on the northbound leg and then 234 watt hours per mile on the southbound leg. So that means that we got 216 
watt hours per mile average on the previous run whereas on this run we got 195 watt hours per mile in the northbound run which is a little bit better but then way worse on the southbound run at 250 watt hours per mile which means uh so 55 watt hours per mile spread for that puts us at uh so that would be 27.5 watt hours per mile added to the 195 so that's exactly 222.5 watt hours per mile so 222.5 watt hours per mile is still better than what you would get at epa uh range So we should definitely be able to get more than the, well, more than the 316 miles, which you need to get about uh, 230 watt hours per mile per use to get 200 and, or to get 316 miles range out of it. So at 222.5 watt hours per mile, we did do better than the 316 miles range possible, but I'm not sure if we got the 326 miles uh, range possible. I'll have to do a little bit more math on that separately to determine that. But overall, I was a little disappointed in that. I'm guessing that there was uh, some headwinds on our way back southbound. It was pretty windy out and it was cooler than the previous uh, trip. I actually, I, I checked and it was closer to 70 to 80 degrees on the last trip. So actually it was much warmer. Um, on that so that definitely had an impact but i will go ahead and put the numbers here at the exact uh efficiency or rated miles that we would have gotten on 222.5 waters per mile efficiency and how that compares to our previous run of uh <laughs> 216 waters per mile for efficiency and then this will be a good baseline for our future tests and i would like to do some cold weather testing between the model y and the model 3 because we don't have the heat pump in the model 3 so i do expect the model y to do better in those cases if you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one